Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go through tension, um, top tension, how to adjust it, uh, how to recognize why the tension has gone wrong. Is it the top thread? Is it the bottom? I'm getting confused. I don't know anymore. So I'm going to um, just give you some examples on, on what you can do. Tension for me was such a difficult thing to get my head around at first and I would often have to dig the manual out or go and google and it was like I just don't get it I just don't get tension I hate tension I hate it and then I'd get a nice machine and it's like oh look the tension's fine I don't have to worry about it um so it's been a horrible thing for me to learn uh I'm sure a lot of you understand tension um, there might be some of you that are in the same place that I was and just doesn't get it. And it's just annoying and frustrating. So you've got your machine and you're threaded up properly, your bobbin's in the right way. And you're just happily sewing and it's all very nice. And then let's get to the end. So everything seems to be fine. It's all nice and lovely. Oh, that didn't sound very good, did it? I wonder what's going on. Oh no, it seems to be threading okay. Oh, very lovely. Okay. Let's have a look at the stitch. Yeah? Seems all right. Let's have a look at the back. Oh my days. And I'm sure you've had thread where that has happened. I mean, what is going on there? Looks fine on the front. Why is that happening? Okay, so let's explain that. Let's get, now I've created a little demo thing. So I'm really hoping that this will work. So I was practicing with it. Okay, so I have, obviously I'm using a ruler with a hole in it. And let's see, will that work like that? Hmm. It actually won't, okay. Let me take that out. I was gonna try and do a demo, but I can't do it and have extra hands. So, we've got two pieces of thread. Let me just turn it so that it's, okay. So we've got two pieces of thread. The black is gonna be our bottom thread and the white is the top thread. And then I need you to use your imagination that the fabric is dead in between the two, which is why I was going to use my ruler, but I, I can't. Uh, have I got anything else I could use? Oh, I do actually. Hang on, bear with me a minute. Let me show you using the machine. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to unthread him because what I'm looking for is a hole. So let's hope you can focus on that. So you know this is the take-up lever. So I'm gonna do something a bit. Oh, I can't even do it. Come on, right. Bear with me a minute. Actually, hang on, let me just pause, otherwise it's gonna take forever. Okay, it didn't work with the sewing machine, but I found another ruler. So, pretend our ruler is a piece of fabric. Black thread, the black is our bottom thread and the white is the top thread. So under tension, it's a bit like a tug of war. So they're both pulling like a tug of war. The perfect tension is when the tug is absolutely perfect and the point where the two threads are meeting is dead center in the fabric. But if your tension is off, think of it as a tug of war, that means one side is pulling more than the other. Okay, so keeping with the tug of war, with our tension, your bottom tension, which in this example is the black thread, only has one strength. That's it. That's its thing. It just has one, one pull, one strength, and it's fine. But the top 
thread, you can adjust the tension, okay? Because you don't normally, even the manual says don't adjust, don't touch the bottom tension. So if there is not enough tension on our top thread, our bottom thread is going to pull it through, which creates a loop. If there is too much tension on the top thread, it will start to pull the black or the bottom thread through. And what you start getting is that. So if there's not enough tension on the top thread, it will loop at the back. If there is too much tension, the thread pulls, the bottom thread pulls through. And what you normally find is, is that actually causes that, it looks a bit like that, and it's like a weird ridge start to fall, start to form. If the tension was like super, super too much, it will start to create the loop on the on the top of your fabric because that bottom thread is pulling through. So it's a game of tug and war with every single stitch. And if you can find the optimum tension, then your thread sits right in the middle. Your your stitches, sorry, sit dead center in the middle. So that that is perfect tension. So going back to my piece of fabric, this is my top tension, my top thread. This is my top thread showing through on the bottom. So what's happening is it's doing that. And what does that mean? It means this is too loose because my bottom tension has been able to pull it through. When you have this, the first thing to do is to adjust the top tension. Any sort of like, oh my days, this is just, I mean, this is a bit awful. Um, and there's like nesting and, and everything. If you see this on the back, that means your bottom bobbin is winning the tug of war. So we need to adjust it. So let's try and fix this. Now, my I'm using a 201 and my dial has numbers on it, which makes it easier, but it doesn't actually, it, you might have an older machine that doesn't have the numbers. Um, numbers do make it easier, but you, you're essentially just doing a quarter of a turn. So let me just thread up. With, I still need an extra hand. All right, let me pause and then just thread up. Okay, I am threaded up, ready to go. So I know that my top tension, this one, is way too loose, which is why the tug of war is winning on the bobbin side, it's pulling it through. So let's start again. Let me line this up a bit better so we can start comparing. And this is what you should do. If your tension's out, just start literally at zero or at one, or basically, if you don't have numbers, pull it out as far as you can. And we're gonna start building up the tension because we're adding strength each time to, to kind of adjust that tug of war. So let's have a look. So whether you've got numbers or not, you kind of wanna do just a quarter of a turn. And let's have another try. This is why a test sew is really good because you can then start comparing. Let's go to about there. Let's have a look. Mm, okay. So just by turning that tension just a quarter, there's still some loopage, but it's not as bad as it was. So I know that the tug of war is starting to balance out a bit. So let's go again. Let's crank that up a little bit more. So I'm just doing a quarter of a turn, but on a dialed one that, that's actually moving to the next number.
Mm. Oh, hello. Now that is starting to look much better. Now we're starting to have equal tension, which means in our tug of war, they are starting to balance out now. Now, one thing that will affect your tension, and, I, and this, this might sound really daft, but I, again, I learned the hard way. So I'm just going to take my thing off a minute. Um, so there you go. That I'm using a 201K Mark II um, called Gondor. If you look at my thread, yeah, it looks fine. looks no problem. I'm missing something. What am I missing? I am missing this. Now, it might just be a common spool felt, but it makes a huge difference with tension, strangely enough. And let me show you why. So, now you can get like a, um, a thread stand. So, I'm not using a thread stand. But what I'm going to do is we're going to just concentrate on my thread spool at the moment. And in fact, I had my tension set to number one to be able to show you um, dodgy tension. So I'm going to set it back to number one on here, which will hopefully create that nastiness again, okay? But we're not gonna, actually, I'm not gonna watch what I'm doing here. What I am gonna do is just pay attention to the thread. See, the thread is a bit, it's a bit jiggly and, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem like that much if I, you can see what, what's happening. Okay, so the, the thread's quite loose. Obviously, I haven't got that much tension on and it's a bit jerky at the thread end, at the spool length. Let's have a look at the nastiness going on here. And yeah, it started to, so that's the one I've just done, start to create. Let's just pop it there. So I am not gonna touch the tension at all. What I am gonna do is make sure I have a spool felt. Now, the importance of a spool felt, it's only a tiny little bit of felt, the importance of a spool felt, it helps to stop the, this spool from spinning. Because if you think it, it, if I just pulled this now, pulled that thread, it would just, it would just go. Vroom. Your spool felt helps to stop that. So I haven't touched my tension. It's still on number one, which means in theory, I'm expecting a load of at the back. This time round, I've just got a felt on. So let's start chugging away. I'm only gonna do a short stitch. The thread isn't jumping as much, it's not jerking. All I've done is put a thread a spool felt on. Let's get to the end and let's clip the camera back up. Okay, so in theory. Nothing much has changed because my thread is still, uh, I still have very loose tension. So this line is without a spool felt. This is with a spool felt. Explain that. No spool felt, spool felt. Oh, so that took me ages to work out. I just thought I had, massive tension issues no matter what I did with my 201. The spool felt makes a huge difference as you can see because it helps with tension. I know it's daft but it helps it helps to stop your spool thread bobbling and bouncing about everywhere and and that just shows how much difference it can make. 
Now, it still hasn't won the tug of war and that's extremely loose because now I'm going to be picking because you can see there's little kicks in the thread. Some of it's nice and some of it's not so nice. So if you are having tension issues, step one, make sure you've got a spool felt on. Step two, let's start this end. Oh no, let's, let's carry on, I'm keeping a line. Step two, start making lines. And you can, you, it then shows that you can compare um, as you increase tension. Oh, I left my press foot. Your optimum tension on a numbered dial is around three. If I turn it to about three on a non-numbered dial, you can just feel that bolt with your thumb. It's about, it's about there-ish, but each machine is different. And obviously in my last video, I was talking about pressure, so that can make a difference. There's lots of different things that can affect tension. But if, if we assume that the pressure is perfect, the bobbin's in right, the needle's threaded up properly, and we have a spool felt, we should now not have so much tension problems. Now we can focus just on that tug of war going on. So now with our spool felt, and I have adjusted the tension to, to what would normally be considered a, a, a normal tension amount. Let's go to about there. Oh, I hate the thread camera. I should just take it off of this because now I've got it knotted. Right. We are starting to get neat tension. We've not got this length bagginess and if I turn it over it is starting to look very nice still a little bit of a kink but I am using calico so fabric makes a difference that is the easiest way to start sorting out let me roll back to start sorting out your tension start at line one with zero tension or you know minimum amount of tension and then start moving a quarter of an inch round start getting slowly well it's going that way but a quarter of an inch round start making it tighter tighter if you if you look at the dial it's a quarter turn and a quarter turn is basically the number i think it's just short short of that but just a little bit more and start working your excuse me start working your way up until you start getting really perfect tension and that is your tug of war just aligning and being perfect in the center. What you might find as well is different fabrics will have an effect on your tension. Remember in the last video, I was talking about pressure and, and a single thin fabric like silk compared to really thick fabric. So with the pressure of a thicker fabric, you might need to increase the tension or you might need to, you know, it, it really depends. So. Don't be afraid of tension. It's, you know, if your tension is slightly out, it just means your tug of war is, is a bit funky. That's all. Now, another thing, and it's just, just, just a quick little thing, but it will help. You might have perfect tension, but now I don't know whether, let's see if I can demonstrate it. You might have great tension and then That's uh, not going to do it. Hang on, I'm trying to replicate something that also happens. And let's see if I can do it. It's not going to do it. <laughs> I think because I know what's what's going to happen, and um, mentally I'm. Uh, mentally, I know it's going to go bad you'll see what I mean hopefully in a minute mm, did that work no oh well, it actually started to I would just talk for it instead so <clears throat> thread jam and uh, 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 let me see if there's a oh, 
thread jam. So you put your fabric in and you're gonna, you start sewing and you create a thread jam, which I'm not able to replicate. Let's really mash it up. Let's try and do it that way. No, it's still not doing it. One more go. I'm going to take the spool felt off and see if that will cause a thread jam. It's one of those things you never want to happen, and then when it does happen. Oh, yeah, it's starting to. I've got a thread jam. There you go. Oh, that's quite a good one. Okay. I have a thread jam in my fabric. Oh, that's not bad, actually. That's quite a good thread jam. <laughs> so this happens, <clears throat> but how do you stop it? Now, I forced that thread jam, and I forced it because I kept the threads this side um, towards the left, and I also started my fabric right on the very edge, and I forced it to jam, which is causing that lovely little bird's nest there. So now let me explain and hopefully you can see. So when if I just leave them like that towards the front at the moment, when your needle starts to go in like that, it starts to suck the threads back in, which is why people say, hold them out the back. So I will hold them out the back. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sh shorten those threads and come a little bit closer so that you can see both threads. So when my needle goes down, it's pulling, sucking those threads back in. Add a piece of fabric and it's sucking them back in. But when your presser foot is down, these threads, let's see if I can, oh, I'm not gonna be able to replicate it again now, but, oh, it fell out. What's happening is with your presser foot down in your needle up, let's grab the fabric, you pull your needle and it will start to suck the fabric, not the fabric, the thread. I can't replicate it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll do it without. Right, try again. When your needle goes down, it sucks your threads back. So people say to hold the threads out the back and to hold them just to get your stitch started. So you hold them out the back you put your presser foot down and you start to sew and you've held those threads in place and that stops the threads sucking back in, which stops, where's my pretty thread jam gone? I've lost my thread jam. Oh, was it on a different piece of fabric? I can't find it now. Okay, anyway. Um, so that, that's what starts to cause the thread jam. It's your thread tails getting sucked back in, but because your presser foot is down, the threads aren't going anywhere, so they get stuck in the pressure under the presser foot or get pushed in, and then you get um, horrible knottage starting to happen and it's all very upsetting and then you've got to drag it all out and there's problems the tip to making sure that it doesn't ever nest at the beginning let's get a nice clean sheet you don't need to hold your threads and you don't need to hold them out the back because that, the holding them out the back, is the quickest route back in. 
Hold them at about there, about one o'clock. If you imagine on a dial, hold them at one o'clock. You just want them there. Have enough thread, about three inches, enough to hold it so it's just starting to go over your base. But you want it at about the one o'clock mark. When you start sewing, even if you start right on the very edge of the fabric, the first thing that goes down is your needle. Not your presser foot, your needle. What that does is it's engaged the threads ready, which means they're not gonna suck in any more than they already have. Your threads are there. I'm not even touching my threads. Then put your presser foot down. Then you can sew and you will never, ever, ever get a thread jam. Even if you start right on the very, very, very tippy edge of your fabric. Get into a habit of one o'clock, needle down, press a foot down, crank away, or foot on the pedal. This is, that was one of the things that they do mention in old, ma not manuals as such, but um, sewing classes as well. It's one of those forgotten things. But like you can see, I started right on the very edge. Oops, right on the very edge of that fabric. No problems at all. So always start your thread at one o'clock, fabric in, needle down, press the foot down, sew away. On the next video, I will go through verse stitching and um, back stitching, uh, but also not just about back stitching, it's like how do you back stitch or reverse stitch if you don't have reverse? So I will go through that. I will also show you how to sew rounds, as in on rounds, um, and just sewing just with one hand. But I'll do that on the next video because I seem to have talked quite a lot on this one and I apologise, but um, I hope you found this one useful as well.